Come on. You know why you're here. Caden Hauser joins the show. Yes, we get to talk with Michigan State quarterback going into the offseason. What on earth was his mindset as he left the spring practice with all the news going on? What is his mentality for the summer and yeah, all sorts of other stuff? Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, thank you so much for joining us today here on Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white five days a week. If you ever want to reach out, have any questions, comments, segment ideas, or you just need someone to yell at for any reason whatsoever, LockedOnSpartans at gmail.com is the place to find us. Now, before getting into the interview, just a quick favor to ask all you fine people out there, please rate, review, and subscribe to this here podcast or YouTube channel. Any way that you are digesting this media, hey, cannot thank you enough for kicking off your weekend with us here at Locked on Spartans. So uh, without further ado, I, why listen to me any longer? Let's get to our guy, Caden Hauser. This is a man that needs no introduction, but I, we're just going to do one anyway. Why not? He can throw a ball from Hubbard to Brody and is one of the few people on campus that can actually out-squat Sparty. It's quarterback Caden Hauser. Uh, this is incredible. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk with us. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. No, you got it. And you're all the way over in Cali. You're enjoying the palm trees, the the sunshine. Although, you know, it's actually rare. We got some sunshine here in sunny old Michigan. But seeing you were missing the most in California, what were you missing the most when you landed back home? Uh, definitely the weather. Um, it was pretty cold when I was leaving. So just definitely yeah. the weather and then some of the food stuff out in California, too. There's some good spots that I missed. So definitely that for sure. <laughs> There we go. And, you know, can't miss the surfing. You're probably doing all sorts of that in Red Sea. A little River, bit, yeah. So you, you that. Can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Well, you've had an interesting start to the offseason. I think all of Spartan Nation kind of has. But, you know, the players are a little more important than just us lowly fans. Transfer portal closes. And, oh, would you look at that? It's it's Peyton Thorne in the transfer portal. And, you know, all of us fans are like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> but from a player, not just a player, but from, hey, a guy that you were competing against, what was your mindset when you first heard that news or saw that news? Just take us through your mind there when that happened. Yeah, I really didn't know what to think. It was kind of surprising for me, for sure. Um, just looking at that, I was like, okay, what now? Um, and yeah. the next step is here. I got, I got an opportunity to go compete for the job, and I didn't shy away, and I'm, I'm ready to work. So that's the biggest thing. Is Another thing is, too, is good luck to him as he goes to Auburn. I mean, he's yeah. he's going to do really well there, so I'm really excited for him. But um, as far as Michigan State, like I'm ready to come in and work. So I, I'm, I think it's a really good opportunity for me, and I'm ready to step in. So I'm excited. And I love that video that you had on Twitter. If anyone missed it, it was kind of just like, and I'm going to you know, paraphrase here. Everyone calm down. Everyone relax. Okay, we got this. And also thank you, Peyton Thorne, for everything you taught me. Um, and, you know, good luck. Uh, what, what was the number one thing that he taught you? What's the biggest thing you're going to take away from his tenure here at MSU? Um, definitely his leadership style. I mean, going into Michigan State and looking at the leader that he was, um, he gave me a lot of insight just how to lead a group of guys. And I feel like I'll take that to the next step as I transition to a leadership role next year. For sure. And it's a unique situation because, I mean, of course, battling for a starting quarterback job. But the unique situation, I want to go back to high school because at St. John Bosco, you kind of also had to split your time yeah. uh, in your senior year as well. Do you think that's going to kind of help what's going on right now with the you and Noah Kim kind of battling out for number one? Or how's that going to help you? Yeah, awesome. I feel like throughout my whole like high school career and even in college, I've always been competing. So um, yeah. it's in my nature and I feel like it's, it's easy for me to go out and compete. And I feel like it's natural for me. So I don't think that's a problem going into is this competing side. I'm always competing. So that's not something I'm not really worried about. Yeah. And it's just like a nice mix of competition, of course, in the spring, but also growth. I'm sure. I mean, you've been on campus for now, God, over a year, but well, what's the biggest area of growth that you've had from last spring when you arrived on campus to how you exited this spring ball? Just definitely the the mental side of it. I feel like when I came here as a like a true freshman in the winter, and then did like the spring winter programs and spring ball and stuff, I feel like I was thrown in the fire a little bit. Had to yeah. learn the offense quick and get reps, and you're kind of thrown into team periods and stuff, and you're you're not really sure what you're doing yet or how to execute the plays. And now that I've been here a year and I've gone through the offense and I've had many many reps, I feel like going into next year, I feel like I'm more prepared than I've ever been, and I'm more confident to go out and run the offense to the best of my ability. So I'm really confident going into summer ball and fall camp. 
Now, this could be a, a dumb question. I'm good for a few of those every interview, but you had a little bit of experience uh, against Akron. It was only a few plays, but were you able to take anything out of a sample size that small, or was it really just kind of like, eh, it's nothing that I don't usually see during practice? Um, yeah, it was just different just with the fans there and stuff and the, ga- the sure. speed of the game and stuff, but um, there was some just kinks I need to work out, and I, I realized that like after watching the film, like stuff I could have done better, stuff I, that I did do well, it's just – Getting more of those reps definitely is going to make me better. But I, I was happy I got in and got that experience early. So it was good. For sure. And we want to talk about your game here in a little bit. But uh, first, hey, you know, you're not the only quarterback competing in this room. So what is it about Noah Kim that really sticks out to you? If you could just talk highly about, you know, obviously competitor, but also teammate, brother, you know. So, like, what's the yeah. best thing that uh, Noah Kim does when you see him uh, working yeah. the ball at sprint? Our quarterback room is super close, so I'm really close to Noah. Yeah. We, we had a couple times. Uh, we're having a quarterback golf outing pretty soon, so we'll be we'll get on the course pretty soon. But as far as Noah as a football player, I mean, he is he can he's a playmaker. That's what I that's one word I can describe him as is a playmaker. He's a, he's able to use his feet, use his arm, and he has a bunch of different abilities just making plays all over the field. So I feel like he's really good at making plays. And for anyone that's not, you know, in tune with your game, which a lot of Spartan Nation is, but just to talk about your game for a little bit. And there's no question it's more awkward than like, hey, talk about yourself for a little bit. Yeah. But really, like, what do you think the strengths of your games are uh, for, you know, a program like Michigan State? I feel like the mental side of it is something that I really uh, take pride in is understanding defenses, understanding the offense and being able to go out and uh, deliver the ball everywhere I need to be. I feel like I'm really accurate. I feel like I can put the ball anywhere on the field. Um and I can put the ball in any playmaker's hands. So I feel like that's part of my game that I feel like I'm really good at. And also coming from a place like St. John Bosco, you know, like this isn't your, you know, down the road city school like that. That is a, that's a high pedigree school right there. How much should they help you prepare for a power five program like Michigan state is, is there not much drop off between what you're doing over there and what you're doing at MSU? Um, There's, there's a pretty good drop off. I just feel like okay, being able to compete with the best in the country at St. John Bosco is what, is going to help me the most at going to that school is just you compete against the best high school kids in the country and the offense too is it's pretty uh it's pretty high de- like depth and sure it's, yeah it's, it's good offense so i feel like it kind of helped me a high school career transition to college Right on. And just to branch outside of the quarterback room here, during spring ball, I mean, a lot of new faces, whether they be transfers, uh, incoming freshmen, early enrollees, what new face or new faces really stuck out to you as like, this guy's the real deal <laughs> right now. Any, anyone really shock you here in spring ball? Um, we had transfer Nate Carter running back. I feel like he, he made some strides during spring ball. He was a really good player. And there's some freshmen that came in. Um, Stanton Ramil, his tackle freshman. He's, he's really good. I've talked to him a couple gotcha. times. He's a good, great guy. Um, and then also Brendan Parachek, tight end. Um, he's came over a couple times, and seeing him practice stuff, it's it, he's been really good. So there's a couple guys that I'm, I'm really keeping an eye on for this year. Yeah, and the receiver room, too. I mean, speaking of Parachek, obviously a tight end, but as far as pass catchers go, I mean, Jaden's gone, Keon's gone. So it's kind of just like a whole, well, blow it up and let's start over. Let's see who's going to stick their neck out and win some of these jobs here. What is the receiver room like right now? What are the, you know some of the, the top athletes that you've been throwing to, if you could just talk about them for a hot second? Yeah, we had a couple guys that kind of stepped up during spring ball and made some really good plays. I feel like Christian Fitzpatrick, um, he stepped up a big a big amount. And then also Montori Foster coming back from injury. Um, he's been really good for us. And also the freshmen, too. I feel like Tyrell Henry, Antonio Gates, Jerron Glover, all those guys have really made big strides coming into the season. So I'm excited to see how they play. And flip side of the ball, too. Anyone giving you a problem on defense? And Anyone that's uh, getting a little too close to you with the pass rush or anyone that's really knocking a few balls down in the defensive backfield? What do we got there? I mean, Jacoby, he's always giving me problems. Oh, yeah. I, I, he's, he's so hard to go against, but, I mean, that's just going to make me better. So he's a great player, and I love going against him. Yeah. I, God, no kidding. Jacoby, I'm, I'm thrilled for him to, to come back here. So. Yeah. No, but so as you go, like, into the summer, obviously, you know, we got some time before official practices start up again. What, what's that exit like for spring ball? Are you having sit-downs with coaches? Are they telling you what you got to work on? Or is it pretty much already understood what you got to work on? Just what, What's that like as you go into the offseason here? I feel like I'm really good at understanding what I need to work on and understanding how I can get better in the offseason. But, yeah, I've had, I've had sit-downs with both coaches, Coach Johnson and Coach yeah. Tucker, and um, just talking with them, seeing what I need to work on going into, into the my little break. And um, I talked to them, had a meeting with them, just seeing what I need to work on. And I feel like we're in a good spot right now where I, I know what I need to do and I know – what steps I need to take going into this break. 
And be right back with Kate and Hauser here in a hot second. Just need to talk your ear off about Built Bar. That's right, gang. This is an important start to anything you do this summer, whether it's golf course, whether it's workout, yard work, whether it's just, you know, an old company picnic. You just need some energy to get into it. Well, hey, Built is going to take care of you with their fantastic products, all wrapped in 100% real chocolate. They're soft, they're chewy, and they taste better than any candy bar that you've ever had. I, try to eat. A churro puff bar and tell me that's not the greatest thing that you've ever eaten and better yet hey most of these built bars just 130 calories just four grams of sugar but a whopping 17 grams of protein you're not going to feel weighed down or all jittery like all your other protein bars that you've had in the past you're going to feel light but you're going to feel all that power with the protein that they pack in it so next time you're at sam's club next time you're at walmart or hey if you like the old-fashioned internet built.com go find the flavor you like and sink your teeth into some built bars and just as you go into the break even outside of football i mean surely there's something else that you do out there what, what do you like to do when you're away from the football field when when you are back home um i've gotten into golf so i've been golfing a little bit more and then also surfing going to the beach so there's a couple couple things i like to do but yeah i'm trying to find ways to get out get away from football for a little bit you able to golf around MSU? Do you have any favorite courses like in the Lansing area at all? Um, I've gone to Timber Ridge a couple times. I kind of like that okay. course. Yeah, it's kind of an oddball, but um, I like that course. Yeah, I like it. No, yeah. it's it's solid. And uh, the Forest Acres course is never disappointing. Yeah, too, those are never those been good too. out there yet. Yeah. They, they, they always deliver. Reasonably priced. It's beautiful. So, yeah. you know, actually, you know what? Uh, this isn't football at all, but it's about football players. That, that quarterback golf scramble that you talked about yeah who's the top one in the group i mean is, is it just you or is there anyone else that you got your eye i mean like yeah no this guy's a stick over here a uh, drew scorefar he's a uh, one of our walking okay. quarterbacks he, he had a really good uh little round last year so i mean I've, I've gotten better since i've played that last outing so i'm ready to go and compete and try to win that 100 percent. there we go if you if you need a caddy and you want some you know dweeby podcast host to be your caddy i can offer my services but I'll if try you guys, you're all good there there we, go. <laughs> there we go. Love it, man. So before, you know, let you go, enjoy the rest of your off season, the rest of your time at home. We're going to put you on the hot seat for five quick hitting questions here. These all are right. all like lightning round questions here. So are, are you ready to get absolutely grilled right I'm now? I'm ready. Hit me. All right. There we go. Favorite thing to do on campus away from the football building when you're not, you know, in football or any lecture halls, what's your favorite thing to do on campus? I am basketball. Right. Get some runs. Ooh. There we go. There we go. God, great memories there. Uh, favorite helmets MSU has? Mm, I like the all green ones with the green Spartan head on it. We think we wore them yep. one game. Yeah. Those are tough to beat. A lot of good memories uh, watch MSU play in those. Favorite part of game day, but not counting the game itself? Oh, that's a halftime. Question. Halftime. I get like... I get little bites <laughs> and some orange slices. It's good. I like that. What more do you need in life? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what flavor of little bites are we talking? Are we talking chocolate chip or what are we chocolate doing here? Chocolate chip. Oh, geez. Yeah, there we go. I was gonna have I was gonna have a little bit of concern if it wasn't chocolate chip, but yeah. okay, that's that's good. We're on the right side of history here. Uh, favorite part of road trips? Definitely team meal. I feel like team meal is definitely where because we we hang out the whole night. Like even the day before the game, after the game, we're sitting in the team meal room just hanging out and talking. And I've heard some stories from former guys, and that those are some of the best times. So definitely the meal time for sure. There we go, team camaraderie. You can never beat it. And last yeah. thing, thing you're looking forward to the most in the new football building. What do you got? Locker room for sure. It's it's tough yeah. right now because we're going back and forth from the stadium to the facility. So having the locker room right. there is, I'm really excited for that. No, there we go. Any idea when that's supposed to be wrapped up? I know I'm asking you a, a construction question right now, but th have they given you a rumored date or no? I've I've heard August. I've heard next spring. I've heard a, a bunch of things, so I have no okay. idea. But it's it okay. looks like it's getting up pretty quick, so we'll see. Yeah. So anytime between next week and 2026, this thing will yeah. be live and ready to sure. go. Perfect. Awesome. There we go. <laughs> well, okay, man. Can't, can't appreciate you enough. Uh, anything you want to shout out? Any NIL you want to plug? Anything you want to plug before we uh, get you out here and enjoy the rest of your off season? Not right now, man. Just thank you for having me. I really appreciate your time, man. Thank you. There we go. Hey, good luck on the golf course. Go get them. And uh, best of luck this upcoming season. If you don't talk to you by then, man, really uh, do appreciate everything that you've been doing for MSU here. So good luck, man. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Again, huge thanks to Caden Hauser for carving some time out of his busy off season to uh, talk with us here. You know, at Locked on Spartan. So another exciting player interview in the books. We'll try to get even more of those as the off season goes on. But uh, 
Hey, you know what? I mean, it's never a guarantee uh, that we ever get them, but it's always thrilling when they do. Hope you enjoyed that chat as much as I did. And yeah, best of luck to him in the quarterback battle. Of course, best of luck to Noah Kim. And I think it's a, a pretty healthy quarterback battle going in here. We've talked about this the last few days, um, if not weeks, ever since Peyton Thorne left that. It's probably as good of a departure for your starting quarterback as it could be. Because normally, okay, a, a program loses a two-year starter. That can, can really decimate some things around here, whether it be just morale, whether it be, well, the actual talent that's still in the quarterback room. But, hey, everything I know, everything that people I've talked to know, they're not looking for another quarterback in this spring transfer portal window. So that leads me to believe that, yeah, they are pretty comfortable with uh, Kaden Hauser. They're pretty comfortable with Noah Kim. So, hey, let the best man win. We have two solid options here. And let's just flip the page into this next chapter of MSU football because, uh, of course, this is far from the only position battle that will be going on. We also got some receivers that are going to stick their neck out here and hopefully win a starting job because that room is pretty much just a blow it up and start all over again project. And, yeah, so it's going to be another chapter to turn with Michigan State football. And I think it helps, too, that it's actually one position group where there's not a lot of turnover. It's the offensive line. There's one thing you want to keep constant when you have a lot of changing faces around you. It's that offensive line because, I mean, God, we've learned, uh, whether it's watching other teams like Georgia having incredible trench play, whether it's, uh, you know, having some teams that kind of just falling apart because of injuries or just lack of talent. Well, that's also with the offensive line as well. So, hey, sunny outlook for Michigan State, all things considered. And, uh, yeah, hopefully that interview there uh, really really jacked you up. Uh, we're going to head into the mailbag for a little bit here because we have a question from Red Cedar Lumberjack. We've been sitting on this one for a while. This one has taken a lot of thought, and I'm still going to lose sleep on it, even though none of these players that we're going to talk about uh, will probably ever hear this podcast. They probably will never uh, be offended by anything. But the question was, who is on your D'Antonio era players, Mount Rushmore, and who was on your Izzo one as well? Here we go. We're going to start with the Mark D'Antonio era Mount Rushmore. And hey, if you know me, if you know this podcast, you know I'm a big, big fan of one Kirk Cousins, uh, my favorite Spartan of all time. Yes, Captain Kirk, number eight, never lost to Michigan. Uh, really helped bring MSU back to uh, what they were for the better part of the 2010s decade. So Kirk Cousins, number one. All right. Another player. That was also early in the Mark D'Antonio tenure, really helped turn things around, really established the identity of tough-nosed Mark D'Antonio defenses. We're talking about who? Greg Jones, linebacker, a little undersized, but two-time All-American. I mean, he brought that lunch pail mental mentality to the football field every single season uh, under Mark D'Antonio, so he helped turn things around and was... I mean, God, just a prominent figure in those early defenses that really, again, stuck through the Mark D'Antonio tenure here. Now, the other QB that I absolutely love, we talked about this guy not too long ago in a top five Connor Cook moments podcast. Uh, whether it's, hey, just his persona, right? Just how cool, confident, and cocky he was. But, hey, when you win as much as you do, if you're Connor Cook, is it being cocky or is it just letting everyone know who you are? Uh, again, I, I think that arrogance does have a place in sports if you can back it up. And Connor Cook backed it up. I mean, just, you know, two Big Ten championship game MVPs. Just a little Rose Bowl victory for you. And then leading Michigan State to a college football playoff berth. Connor Cook has to squarely be on that Mount Rushmore. And that leads us to number four. And God, it's always that last spot that just drives me up a wall. It probably drives you up a wall when you have to make these sort of things. I'm going to go Dark Quest and Denard here. Two on offense with Kirk Cousins and Connor Cook, and two on defense, Greg Jones and Dark Quest Denard. Uh, Jim Thorpe winner. I, obviously, we know his story. He was the keystone member of that no fly zone. But it does pain me to leave guys like you know, Trey Waynes off that Mount Rushmore. It pains me to leave one of my favorite players of all time, Aaron Burbridge, off that Mount Rushmore. Tony Lippett, another great uh, great player. Kenny Willickis, BJ Cunningham as well. I mean, God, just the list goes up and down of great players under Mark D'Antonio. If you want to count Antoine Simmons, too, he was a Mark D'Antonio recruit. Showed out in the early, early wins. Of, well, not the early wins, the first win of the Mel Tucker era against Michigan. I mean... You can make an argument for him too, but yeah, God, there's probably 
more than a handful of players that I'm missing here. Yeah, LJ Scott, for example, uh, God, you're one of my favorite, very unsung heroes of those uh, great teams, Gerald Holmes. But I'd have a hard time, you know, putting like a running back number two on Mount Rushmore. That would just be a selfish play. But yeah, that's what I'm going to go with for the D'Antonio one. Kirk Cousins, Greg Jones, Connor Cook, Dar Quez Denard. Uh, now for the Izzo one. God, this is even harder because that's another full decade of players that you have to sift through uh, and just lose countless hours of sleep over. Okay, 1A is Mateen Cleaves. Uh, it's not going to be any argument over that. I think Mateen Cleaves is going to be on everyone's Izzo player, Mount Rushmore. Number two, and I don't think I'm victim of the moment anymore. I think en enough years have passed to give us a look on his career and still have him up there. And it's a recent point guard. It's, it's Cassius Winston. I'd have a really hard time leaving Cassius Winston off this list. Just everything he did in 2019, everything he did in his senior year until COVID shut down that season. I mean, everything he meant to Michigan State on the court and off the court. Everything he battled through on the court and off the court as well. Bonafide Spartan dog. Wasn't the most athletic guy on the court, but was the most dominant point guard in the country. So Cassius Winston has to be up there as well. And let's, let's start working on getting his name and number up in the rafters, uh, shall we? We'll, we'll start a campaign later on. Number three, you probably notice that I haven't you know mentioned a, a huge name yet. This guy could have been the very first name uh, I read off, actually. And that is number 23. That is a man with his number already in the rafters. That's Draymond Green. That's Day Day. That, that is the, uh, God, the, probably the epitome of a Spartan dog. Tough kid out of Saginaw, did it on defense, did it on offense as a Michigan State Spartan, and was just a vocal leader, led by example, an all around leader. And Nizzo talked about this uh, with the crew, I believe it was at TNT the other day before the Warriors and Lakers tipped off. And the question was asked Hey, is uh, was Draymond the, the best guy you've ever coached? And Izzo said he was the best at making winning plays. Actually, we just saw that not too long ago. Game five made a ton of winning plays for his Golden State Warriors. But hey, even at Michigan State, multi, multi-time Big Ten winner, Final Fours. I, so what didn't Draymond do for the program while he was here? And what hasn't he done ever since he's graduated? He's been a very loud figure in the Michigan State community for all the right reasons. I mean, this guy is green and white through and through. You can take the Draymond Green out of Michigan State, but you can never take the Michigan State out of Draymond Green. So that's a relationship between program and player that hopefully sticks around forever. I mean, we love having Draymond as part of our program, and, you know, Draymond loves having Michigan State as part of him as well. That leads us to number four, and this is, God, this is this is very tough. There's Kayla Lucas, there's Drell Summers, there's Travis Trice, there's Brennan Dawson, guy Chris Hill, Paul Davis, if you want to go early in the 2000s, Mo Pete. If you want to go really early in the 2000s as well, God, there's so many good players to pick from. And maybe this is a selfish play, but I don't think it is because this is one of my all-time favorite players. When I was hooping in the driveway as a young lad, I would always imagine myself as one Drew Neitzel. That's right, Drew Neitzel. He was a bridge between those early 2000s teams and those early-ish 2010 teams with Kalen Lucas. Was the bridge between that era and kept Michigan State afloat. I, I got to go with Drew Neitzel here. And man, oh man, can I just hear so many arguments for and against that. Because, I, hey, you know, this is what happens when you're a fan of Michigan State. You see... A lot of good point guards come through your uh, program. You've seen a lot of great point guards wearing the green and white on your television screen. So, God, heck, I, maybe even if this year goes right, maybe A.J. Hogard, you know, moves his way onto the Mount Rushmore. Maybe Jaden Akins does, if you will. But, man, there is no shortage of great. You can make a 20-face Mount Rushmore, and it's still not have enough room for all the great players that Tom Izzo has coached throughout the year. So, give me your D'Antonio era, Izzo era, Mount Rushmore, LockedOnSpartans at gmail.com. Or if you're listening on YouTube, comment below. You know, let, let us know where you stand on this and let, let's get a debate slash heated argument going on right here. Uh, we're going to stick to the basketball court uh, really quick here. And this is from Jeff Goodman. Now, this wasn't breaking news. I actually don't know why he just tweeted this randomly in the middle of the day on Thursday. Uh, he said, hey, the Champions Classic is on this year, November 14th at Chicago, or in Chicago, rather. It's going to be Michigan State versus Duke and Kansas versus Kentucky. Um, I think, like, this has already been official, so I, I don't know. Any, for whatever reason he tweeted this, I figured, you know what, we're going to talk about this because we got to 
just have a refresher of how special this Champions Classic could be. Um, again, Michigan State versus Duke. All right, Michigan State one and three against Duke in the Champions Classic. Duke is going to be a machine this year. I'd be pretty shocked if they weren't the number one team going into next year on the USA Today coaches poll, the AP poll, any poll you find. Because, well, when Kyle Filipowski makes his return to Duke, who many mock drafts had slated as being a first round pick, uh, Tyrese Proctor, another guy that was probably a round two pick, but he announced his return to Duke. And then, you know, just a, a few five stars going into Duke next year uh, TJ Power, Jared McCain, Sean Stewart. Caleb Foster, those four names are all five-star players, and they're not just five stars, but they are all ranked inside of the top 20 per rivals as well, so that's going to be a stacked team, but also it's that 